Welcome. My name is Peter Bruno. I'm the lead pastor here at Metro Church in North Halden or in North Jersey. And it is my honor to represent legacy-minded men and this legacy-minded curriculum. And so if you have your Bible, get ready. We're going to get into it and please have something to write with. Um, I'm going to challenge you on some things. There may be some things I may say to you that um, you may disagree with. It's okay. Don't cancel me because part of my purpose is to get you to think. And if I can get you to think and to begin to um, push your boundaries a little bit, it will stir conversation and it will settle what you believe. Ready? All right. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 2, and I'm in the Message Bible, it says this. When King David's time to die approached, he charged his son Solomon saying, I'm about to go the way of all the earth, but you be strong, show what you're made of, do what God tells you, walk in the paths he shows you, follow the life map absolutely, keep an eye out for the signposts, his course for life set out in the revelation to Moses. Then you'll get on uh, well and good with whatever you do and wherever you go. Then God will confirm what he promised me when he said, if your sons watch their step, staying true to me, heart and soul, you'll always have a successor on Israel's throne. I love the King James Version when David says to his son, show yourself to be a man. And so being a son is such a passing of the torch to the next generation. In fact, may I say a greater generation. The next generation is not supposed to equal what we have done, but to begin where we left off. They are to go greater. So here's the design. Higher, higher, or deeper, deeper, however you want to say it, every generation getting better. Now, you've heard stories like this. Now, my family, um, uh, nobody really went to college. And then all of a sudden, in my generation, we were the first to go to college or, or to continue schooling after high school or to complete high school. And so this generation in education was greater than the last. And then, of course, where I am, I've wanted my children to go even further. Whatever money I've made, I want them to go greater. Whatever houses I've, I've purchased or rented, I want them to go greater. And that is the purpose of the next generation, making a greater generation. So it's up to us as sons to choose our generation's direction. Sadly, there are generations that go in a downhill trajectory. And so let's go back to old Israel. You were a son, which made you part of a family, which made you part of a clan, which made you part of a tribe, which made you part of a nation. And so being a son is simply the starting point. So God has not called us to live on our own. We have responsibility as sons and the next generation. Can I tell you as a lead pastor that the, one of the greatest uh, points of Metro Church has to be the next generation. It can't be something that we kind of fiddle around with. It's got to be a priority. Now, God said something amazing to Moses that we see enacted um, in every Jewish home and it's during Passover. The children are invited, strangers are invited, and the Passover Seder is the retelling and the reliving of a story of old. Now, God told Moses, bring your children as a priority. So he was talking about the next generation. You know, I was thinking about some of the enemies of Israel. Remember some of these names? The Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites. These were all powerful nations and cultures. They had their own ideas, inventions, and values. But they're gone. They're nowhere to be found. The only remembrance of them is in Scripture. But Israel 
is stronger than ever. Israel continues. And God understood, if we're going to continue greater, we've got to put the next generation ahead. And so you're part of the next generation and thus your children. And so God told Moses, in fact, uh, I want to take you there. In the book of Deuteronomy, and you've probably heard this verse before, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9. Write these commandments that I've given you today on your hearts. Give, uh, get them inside of you and then get them inside your children. Talk about them wherever you are, sitting at home or walking in the street. Talk about them from the time you get up in the morning and when you fall to bed at night. Tie them on your hands and foreheads as a reminder. Listen to this. Inscribe or write them on the doorposts of your homes and on your city gates. Now, there's a lot of talk about writing here, but this is 3,500 years old. This passage, 3,500 years old. This is an ancient book. The alphabet was barely invented, and God is telling Moses, write this down, let your children see it. Now, in any Jewish and Christian home, one of the things that we do is we might have a verse hanging up in a frame. We might have scriptures here and we have them hanging up. What are they? They're reminders. They might be uh, uh, magnetized on the, the, the refrigerator. And they're there for a reason and it is to fulfill this verse. So the next generation was called to rehearse, write down, retell, and relive what the previous generation did. Let me tell you about the story of the book of Judges. Now, the book of Judges is a sister book to the book of Joshua. Joshua, book of victory. Judges, book of defeat. And the reason it's a book of defeat is because in chapter 2, it says another generation arose that did not know the Lord, nor the great things he had done. Can you imagine the failure of that present generation? That the new generation had no clue who God was. They never heard the stories. And that's why I believe in Sunday school, and that's why I believe in kids ministry and kids church, and you teaching your children at home. We've got to relive this. And God understood for it to move through the generations, we need education. We've got to keep retelling, retelling, retelling. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse number 1, and now I'm in the Passion Translation. Uh, I'm going to go down to verse number, number 4. It says, My child, if you truly want a long and satisfying life, never forget the things that I've taught you, father and son. Follow closely every truth that I've given you. Then you will have a full, rewarding life. Hold on to loyal love and don't let go. And be faithful to all that you've been taught. Let your life be shaped by integrity. That's how you'll find favor and understanding with both God and men. And you will gain the reputation of living life well. So may I commend to you for your daily reading the book of Proverbs or the infilling of godly or heavenly wisdom. It will stir this generation that many times is falling into broken pieces. Yet we need to raise up our next generation as sons. And so there's a lot of responsibility on being a son. We carry the DNA we carry our family line. We carry what was started previously further, not only into the now, but into the tomorrow. It's a dysfunctional father that forces his dream on his children because every child has their own dream. Now, 
growing up in some of the old Italian neighborhoods, so we're losing some of our uh, second and third generation bakeries and uh, pizzerias that have been around for a long time. Why? Well, because of these verses that all of a sudden a dad and a mom coming from Italy uh, started working hard and started this bakery getting up at three in the morning and creating an environment and a neighborhood specialty. And all of a sudden they said, we want better for our kids, so we're going to send them to college. Well, when they graduated, the kids said, I don't want to make bread. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. And so even though we're sad that the bakery is ending, we're happy that progression or forward motion is happening because we want our children to be greater than the previous. We want you, it doesn't matter what age you are, to be greater than the previous. And so it's important that the dream within you becomes birthed. There is a dream. Actually, it's God's dream. And here's what it deals with. Purpose, function, gifts, and destiny. That there's no one like you. That you see things the way you do because of your dream on the inside. Yeah, there might be things that uh, uh, have happened that are wrong. There might be things that are broken on it. There might be a broken lens and you don't have correct focus. But God wants to work on your dream or the uniqueness of who you are. And so God wants to, and when we come to him, God wants to help fix, repair, restore the inside or the dream. That's the thing that drives us. When you wake up in the morning, doesn't matter your job or career, although they should be in line with your dream, but it's your dream that causes you to take breath. There is a, um, there, we, we see the word obey all through scripture. But did you know that in the Old Testament, which is Hebrew, there is no Hebrew word for the word obey. It is the word, it is the word hearken, hearken. Now, I followed this into the New Testament, into the Greek. Now, we can pull the word obey out, but it's really the word listen. So God is upset with King Saul in the Old Testament, and he's complaining, God is complaining to the prophet Samuel and said, he won't listen to me. He doesn't say he won't obey. He won't listen. So I followed this thought all through the New Testament because I was a little, it never really fit well with me when Jesus is talking about that we're not, um, that we're friends and we're not just servants. And then he says, if you love me, obey me. And it just didn't fit until you go down into the core of the Greek and it says, if you love me, you'll listen to me. Wow. Now, can we pull the word obey out of there? Sure. But let's go back to the root. Because when you hearken, when you listen, you take something in. That's why, as a son, Scripture doesn't say obey your parents. It says honor them. Not everything my parents have done or my great grandparents or all those before me had, didn't always do right. And so to honor them, I had to disobey them. Does that make sense? I had to honor them by doing what was right. And in my honor, it heaped on them. Not everything a parent will tell a child is correct. And so we need as sons to honor. And we're going to further Israel Scripture says, started with a few and then became a nation. So there is so much that God wants to do with you. He is so much he wants to do with your generation. I don't care how old you are. So let me end here. We need to care for our parents as, as sons. We can't forget about them. It starts with love and concern, even phone calls. I don't know where they live in relation to where you live, but hey, dad, mom, how are you? And love and concern. What are you going through? How can I help? How can I be there? And then number two, finance and benefit. It is up to us, since we're going to be doing better, to take care of them and to benefit them. Now, I've seen a lot of Hollywood stars that they make it big. And what do they do? They make sure their parents are well taken care of. And thirdly, to give honor and tribute. The way we do that 
is by forgiving them also. Not every parent made right decisions. I didn't make right decisions every single time. And so we need to forgive, and that heaps honor. Well, this is for you. And so I want to pray for you because I want you to be the son that God has called you to be. It doesn't matter how your parents were. It matters how you are. It matters that Jesus is on the inside of you. And so I want to pray that God would awaken your sonship. Ready? And so, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray exactly that. Holy Spirit, that you would awaken the son that is on the inside of us. That generational anointing to raise things up higher and bigger. No status quo. We would multiply increase. And I speak that over you. Increase, increase, increase. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for the honor of letting me have a little time and spending it with you. I hope this helped. And, uh, and this way now, as you take it, begin to apply it. God's going to do an amazing thing in you and your generation. God bless you.